Okay, so in Cushing syndrome, you want to look for clinical manifestations of skin hyperpigmentation. This is due to ACTH excess, glucose intolerance, hypertension, proximal muscle weakness, skin atrophy, and sometimes you will see pictures of wide purplish striae and also central obesity. Don't forget that there are also psychiatric manifestations of Cushing syndrome such as depression and also anxiety. Cushing syndrome is when you have excess cortisol production. The etiology of Cushing syndrome when it comes to increased cortisol production is usually due to ACTH producing pituitary adenomas or other adrenal disorders such as ectopic ACTH production. On top of the clinical manifestations that occur, you will also see sometimes patients with hirsutism, bone loss even, easy bruising, and low potassium. The neuropsychiatric symptoms can get so bad that the patients can even display mania or paranoia. Cushing syndrome is a big reason why we also look for metabolic causes of depressed mood when patients come in with new onset depression. The initial diagnostic test for Cushing syndrome is a 24-hour urinary cortisol excretion. You can also do a late-night salivary cortisol assay or an overnight low-dose dexamethasone suppression test. The 24-hour urinary cortisol excretion test is when you just measure the patient's free cortisol after 24-hour urine collection. You start this after the first morning void, however, this is very tedious as you need the patient to collect their urine for 24 hours. The low dose dexamethasone suppression test is when we give the patient one milligram of dexamethasone around 11 o'clock or midnight and the serum cortisol is then measured the following morning at around 8 or 9 a.m. If you have suspicion of a hormonal overactivation like diabetes or alcoholism or even morbid obesity, it's actually better to do a 48 hour dexamethasone suppression test that is two milligrams per day because this is higher specificity compared to the one milligram test. Normally, when you have dexamethasone, you suppress ACTH, so then you have decreased levels of cortisol. This is why a supportive finding would be an increased early morning serum cortisol level. Lastly, the late night serum cortisol is not usually routinely recommended as the initial test that you do, but you can use this in patients with very inconsistent results from the tests that we discussed earlier. Basically, a serum sample of the patient's cortisol level is taken when the patient is either awake or asleep late at night. The supportive finding of any hypercortisolism would be an elevated serum cortisol. The last thing that you can do, but I didn't mention it earlier, is the late night salivary cortisol. And basically a saliva sample is given at the patient's bedtime. And if it's elevated, then it's also a supportive finding. Remember that the diagnosis of hypercortisolism is confirmed if at least two of the tests have abnormal results.